Hello and welcome to the My Heritage webinar series. I'm Jeff Rasmussen, your host, broadcasting to you live from webinar headquarters in Middleton, Idaho. Today we have Shahar Beaton with us for the topic of how to use these smart matches and record matches My Heritage Technologies. Thanks to Shahar and thanks to all of you, more than 1,800 of you from 27 countries around the world have registered for today's live webinar. Uh, so wherever and whenever you are, thanks for sharing part of your day with us. I'm ha happy to welcome uh, Shahar Beaton to the show. Uh, he is the senior product manager responsible for the core genealogy features of MyHeritage, such as instant discoveries, family tree pages, matching technologies and the genealogy desktop software family tree builder he joined my heritage in 2008 first as QA engineer and then in the roles of customer support and project manager before being promoted to uh, product product manager and senior product manager concurrently with his work at my heritage he completed his BA in psychology and management and MA in clinical psychology he is currently working on his PhD in clinical psychology. Please put together your virtual hands and let's give Shahar Beaton a nice warm webinar. Welcome. Shahar, how are you and welcome to the show. I'm great. Thank you, Jeff. And I'm very, very happy to join you here and excited to do my uh, first webinar uh, with you. Absolutely. Um, it's, re it's really exciting to have my heritage uh, joining uh, and being involved in the webinars uh, for all those for all of the users um, today, I think you can see my screen now, right? Yes, it looks really good. Uh, give it one more okay. click. Yeah, just just somewhere on the PowerPoint, just give it a click, and then uh, it there you go. Okay, yeah, okay, it looks good. it looks really good. So the time's all yours. Thanks again. Okay, thank you again, Jeff. Yep. So. Um, before we dive in into smart match, record match, or general my heritage technologies, I want to share with you my personal genealogy story. Um, although I've been working in my heritage for over ten years, my story begins only three years ago in uh, Namibia, as part of uh, my heritage pro bono project, Tribal Quest. Uh, me and a few other employees went to travel to Namibia to document and, and to document and preserve the history of the Himba tribe. We spent 20 days with them, documenting, building their family trees. Um, I strongly, strongly recommend to view the webinar about Tribal Quest. Um, it's really, really fascinating. But for me, um, this journey to Namibia actually was the connection to genealogy, to my own personal genealogy. When I came back after three weeks in the field, building f family trees and documenting the history of other people, it was kind. It, it was quite ironic for me that I don't know much about my own family history. So as a my heritage employee, the first thing I did was to go to my heritage, to my small little family tree, and see what can I find in my heritage. So, looking at my own at my own personal family tree, um, I found very very interesting things. I want to share with you only one small thing that I think really shows the power of my heritage uh, matching technologies and what we can offer. So, if you look at my grandfather profile, Paul Micker Grillo, um, you can see that there is a small document icon here. I'll go into the details later of exactly what goes on in the background, but uh, now I just want to show you the findings that I discovered. So my heritage found this document for me. So by clicking it, I got to this collection, to this record in Ellis Island passengers list collection, where in row number 10, you could see the name of my grandfather Paul Meeker, age 11, and the names of his mother and five other siblings. They arrived to New York in the, the Santa Paula ship from France. In a quick Google search, I even found a photo of this ship that brought my grandfather and his family to the United States. 
another interesting fact that I found in this interesting record is the name of Mr. Mrs. Bernard Bogan. Sorry, I just I have a problem here that I can't see the entire screen. I think now it's okay. Um, listed here is the contact details of Mr. Mrs. Bernard Bogan in Short Hills, New Jersey. This is the name that my, the mother of my grandfather gave as a contact person in New Jersey. Asked my father, "What? Who's exactly this person?" It's it's the sister of my, of, sorry, it's the sister of my grand grandmother. So I added her quickly to my family tree, and another finding, I got another finding from my heritage ma matching system. As you can see, this small icon here, clicking it, showed me that there is another person in my heritage that added this the same person uh, that that married this Bernard Bogan. As you can see, this this person is is married to Bernard Bogan, and the manager of the site is Mark Bogan, which I can contact him and invite him to my family. The next discovery was really shocking as we contacted Mark Bogan and we got to this beautiful, beautiful family picture where you can see that was taken actually on the same day on the Santa Paula when they arrived to the United States. And here you can see my grandfather on board the Santa Paula, age 11, and today how in my family tree. You can just imagine how exciting it was and how emotional it was for my grandfather to see this photo after so many years. So how did this magic happen? So um, my heritage has specialized matching technology that constantly searching for new discoveries based on the information you add to your family tree. There are three types of discoveries that we're gonna talk today about. We have smart matching, record matching, and instant discoveries. So what are, what are smart matches? Smart matches are matches for people in your family tree that from other family trees that members all over the world have created on myheritage.com. There are over 3 billion family tree profiles in over 41 million family trees. Those are a lot of matches that are waiting for you to find them. We're comparing names, facts, connection intelligently so you'll get the most accurate matches to your family tree. Smart matches can be found in your in your family tree with this green recycle icon that indicates that we found a match f for you in another in another member family tree. Record matches are matches for people in your family tree with historical records that we, we found in our growing collection of over nine billion historical records. Records can be birth, marriage, census records, military records, books, whatever we have in our growing collections that grows every day. Historical records or record matches can be indicate, are indicated by the brown document icon on, on your tree. Clicking either of these icons will take you directly to the, to the match that we found to you on MyHeritage. All your matches, either record match or smart matches, can be found in the in the discovery section. Discovery sections can be viewed. Discoveries or matches could be could be viewed either by people or by source. When you view your matches by people, you have a list a list of all the people in your tree that we found matches for them. And for each person, you can see exactly what the what is the new information that you can add to your tree from those matches. Clicking to review the match shows you the detail on each match. What is the information in your tree? What is the information in other in the, in the other tree or, or record? You can see who manages the other tree or from which collection it is, and what information you can get from each match that we found for you. If you review the match, you get a side-by-side -side view comparing what you have in your tree and what exists in the other tree. 
with indication of what is new, what is improved, or if there is contradict contradiction information. If you scroll down the page, you can even compare your tree view to the other person tree and see exactly what you have in your tree and what the other tree may offer you. The next step is to confirm or reject the match. As you can see on the right corner on the top, you can click the, the orange button, confirm. Once you confirm, you get the option to either save the information to your tree or extract manually. What is the difference? If you click save to your tree, all the new or improved information from the match is added automatically to your tree. No need to go field by field or fact by fact and decide what you want and what you don't want. If you do want to go and review the match fact by fact or information by information, you can just click extract your info manually and choose exactly what you want to take from the match or what you prefer not to take. You can review all the fields, all the information and decide exactly what you want to add to your tree. You also have the option to extract all info by one click. And once you click save to your tree, all the information is saved. And, and also importantly, you we create a source citation to the information. Exactly what is the source, what is the URL of the match, the link, and what are what is the text for the citation. So all the information is, is documented and it's clear what is the source and other people can, can know exactly where you got it from. I'll give you some tips to work with a list of matches. As I said, there are a lot of matches in the system. So if you have a reasonable sized tree, you might have hundreds or thousands of matches. So how do you go through all those matches? So if you look at the list, there are a few things that could help you. First of all, you can filter by choosing only the new matches, all pending matches. New matches are matches that were found only in the last 30 days. And you can review matches that you either confirmed or rejected. You can also sort the list. The default sorting is by value. We believe that the most the matches that give you the most value should be handled first, but you can choose to, to sort otherwise, either by most recent, matches that were found most recently, by name of the, of the match person, or by relation. Maybe you want to first see the matches that, for people that are closest to you. The next option is to search. If you click the icon of the search, you can enter whatever name you want, either first name or last name, and the, and the list will be filtered according to that search. Those three items will really help you go through this list. The next view in discoveries is matches by source. If previously we looked through the matches according to people in your tree, we, we can decide to, to view the matches according to source, according to the collection. Let's say I want to see all the matches from a specific uh, uh, census or specific collection or family tree. So this, this view allows you to review all the matches according to a specific source. Once you choose to review the matches, it's exactly the same like matches by person, by people. You get the matches side by side with the information in your tree. You can see exactly what information you get from each match. You can decide to review, save, and extract. It's the same exact actions that you, we had before. The last, uh, last type of discovery I wanted to show you is instant discoveries. So instead of going over the list of matches, which could be tedious and could be a lot of work if you have thousands of matches, MyHeritage created a technology that gives you the opportunity to add new information easily and quickly to your tree by one click. It's based on smart matches, which are matches to other people's trees, as we just mentioned. 
and it allows you to have two different types of instant discoveries. The first is person discoveries, which allows you to add as many as 50 individuals to your tree in one click, including all the details, all the personal photos. You don't have to go over the list. In, a, in one, one click, you can add a, brand, a new branch to your tree. The second type of disco instant discovery is photo discoveries. We scan all, all the matches that you get and we see which personal photos of individuals in your tree we can pull out and offer you to add in one click. The instant discovery is also under the discovery section where you can see the list of the instant discoveries, both person discovery and photo discoveries. The first item in this view, as you can see now, is a, is a person discovery. Clicking to view to the, the discovery, ask you if, the, if it's the same person in your tree is the same in, as in the match that we found. Once you approve it's the same person, we offer you to add the entire branch in one click. Clicking add to your tree will actually add all these people to your tree in one click. Another, uh, another way to see discoveries is actually in, on your tree view. If we find a discovery, we'll indicate it to you by showing the yellow card of discovery. Clicking this card will, will add, will let you review the discovery and add an entire branch by one click. The second type of discovery is photo discovery. So as we said, we go over the people in your tree that don't have personal photos and check if we can find photos for them in the matches in your list. So in this case, we can add up to 10 photos in each discovery to people in your, in your family tree. You can see what you have in your tree and on the other tree. You can view the original photo and see all the details, according, including who's tagged in this photo. And add them to your and add them by one click to your tree. Now, matches are based on very very complicated technology, and I want to sh to share with you some of the technologies we use to find better and more accurate matches that you might not be able to find by if you search for your own. The first one is global name translation. If let's say you have in your tree person named Jacob Schmidt, it could be that this name is added in all sort of other places, either family trees or collections, but it is listed in di in different language. Let's say in this example we have in Russia church books the name in Russian, in Greek in a Greek family tree, in Ukraine in Ukraine birth and baptism collection. And in Hebrew, in, in genealogy research, Israeli genealogy research collection. So how can we collect, how can we get those matches to your, to your tree? So MyHeritage developed an accurate technology that translates names, both first name and last name, from any language to any language. It's based on data that we collected for years from thousands of bilingual family trees built in, in our MyHeritage Family Tree Builder software. And this technology has, has been applied to MyHeritage search engine, smart matches, record matches, instant discoveries. And actually it's also combined with dictionaries. Let's say in your tree you have a cousin named Alexander, but everyone knows him as Alex. So we're not going to look only for Alexander. We're going to look for all the variations and all different names variations of this name. As you can see, it could be Alexander. It could be Alejandro. It could be names in other languages. All these names variations will be matched and, and to, your, to your family tree. And collections that include those matches will, will, be, able to be, will be able to bring them to you very easily using record match, smart match, and instant discoveries.
So next time you go to the to the matches and you see a match from, let's say, Billy Joseph Hambushen, it don't be surprised that you find a match to William Joseph Hambushen that is actually the same person. It's just a different name variation. And with my heritage technology, we can overcome those variation, those different named variations, and still provide with you the match that is actually the same person. The next technology is semantic analysis. So when we have a collection where we have the names and birth date and it's all very organized and structured, it's not as complicated to find matches. But what happens in newspapers and books where you have a narrative or just a paragraph that just tells us a story or describes an event? So MyHeritage developed a semantic analysis technology that allows us to match uh, names and birth date and, and family relations with narratives and free text collections. When we mentioned the semantic analysis, I want to, to, to tell you about the book matching, book, book matching collection, which is technology which is, which is very, very important and very, very valuable. My heritage has 450,000 titles, about 450,000 titles of, of digitized historical books that we, um, that we digitized and we are matching them to your family trees. So any, any name that you enter, we go through all these books and we might find the name and story about that per specific person. So what makes us different? First of all, the global strength. We understand 42 languages and we translate all the names in your family, in your family tree and, and we provide matches in different, in different languages. They're friendly and approachable. All the item, all the lists provide powerful tools and allows you to add the, the information to your tree very easily and with all the, all the tools that you need. Exclusive databases. With our technologies, we managed to bring collections that in, that were not possible to be, that was not possible to search in them before. This means books, newspapers, collections that we always add and always continue to search for matches for your trees. And as we, as I know, as I mentioned, superior technology that we're using and keep improving, and we're always working on making it better for you. Well, actually, <laughs> it was quite faster than I thought. So hey, that's okay. What what we've learned so far was uh, was very good. Um, I Shahar, I wonder if what do you think about this idea? Could I pull up my personal tree, and you walk me through uh, what I'm seeing with the with the smart matches? Because there's there's quite a few questions here. Sure. Um, about some of those processes, people are saying that my mic is very low. So let me. Are you able to hear me? Okay, Shahar. I'm hearing you fine. You're yeah. hearing me just fine. All right. Hold on a second, everyone. I'm going to look for a certain preference to see if I can adjust that. And here I go. Now, what about this, guys? Okay. Yay! <laughs> okay, I was playing around with a certain option earlier, and and uh, sounds like you guys didn't like that option. All right. So, uh, Shahar, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this over to my screen then. And... Gonna go like this. And by the way, here's our upcoming live webinars, everybody. Uh, Digital gravestones. Uh, I I th think that's gonna be talking more about the billion graves efforts, which I really really like. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, and then Mike Mansfield will be back for you need a search strategy, maximizing your results with online genealogical databases, and uh, and then in July special tools that can take your research to the next 
level. So uh, let's do some of uh, these questions and then we'll do some door prizes very soon. So I'm going to bring my browser over to this monitor. And here I am. Can you see my screen now, Shahar? No, I see my screen, by the way. Okay. I need you to... Oh, now I see your screen. You do? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Okay, for some of you, I'll I'll make it a little bit louder now. <laughs> All right. Okay, so so this is going to be kind of like a Shahar. We have a a phrase here on our webinars called "Watch Jeff Live," and, uh, <laughs> and that's kind of what we're maybe we'll do. Watch Jeff and Shahar live, and uh, and we'll just see where we go with this. So you were showing us that if you hover over the Discoveries tab. That's uh, that's one way of getting to the uh, yeah. these matches. Uh, so the smart matches and record matches, I believe. Now, also, do do these do the same thing in the upper left hand corner? Uh, smart yeah, matches and do, record matches. Yeah, they do the same thing. Um, usually, when you have a me even a medium sized uh, tree, you get a lot of matches. Okay. So. As you see, you'll get the 99 plus matches uh, yeah. hovering over there. Okay. So, it, one of it's our also... oh, sorry, well, uh, one of our audience members say uh, said that they have like over 200,000 of these smart matches, and and they're mm -hmm. wondering for uh, some advice from you. Uh, how how sh how could he go through those? Is there a way to prioritize those smart matches or? Um, yeah. Yeah. What, sure. what do you think about that? So yes, you might have a lot of matches because we have a lot of MyHeritage users and my, a lot of trees. So your tree is matched with over 3 billion other profiles. Okay. So the best way to do it is using um, the sorting and search options in this uh, list view. By default, we sort it by value. So we always show you the matches that give you the most value. So for example, in your tree, Harry Martin, which was born in 1908, you can see that you can get new info, death date, death place, occupation, siblings, and you can get it from three different matches. So first we show you the matches with most value that can add the most information or bring you improved information to your tree. So this is the, the default sorting. But if you want, you can choose to sort. Another sorting that I find helpful is by relation, because a lot of t the times I want to see first what you find for people close to me. So if you sort by relation, you get first the, the, the people that are closer to you, and you get matches to people that are closer to you. OK, I like that. And here I see uh, my mother and father-in-law are showing up. Uh, with that, could you talk to me a little bit about um, the living, um, the, the privacy here? Uh, so I am getting these smart matches with, with people that are still living. Is that a, is that a good thing? Is that a, uh, why, why would they appear yes. here? Yes, yes. There, it's always, it's a delicate question, always the privacy. And my heritage privacy is very, very important. Um, but in order to find matches for you, so we have to, uh, we, you get matches for living individuals as well. So what happens is we will show you the information only on the matched individual. That means if Donna Elaine in your tree exists in the other tree, so we'll show you the information of Donna Elaine in the other tree. But we won't show you other living individuals in the tree. All the other living individuals will be privatized. I'm not sure if you have this example in your tr if you can review the matches for example in for Donna Elaine I'm sure she won't mind <laughs> so here for example you see the siblings are private okay because they're living individuals that you do not have matches to and so we do not show you their information if you wish you can contact the site manager Christian Schroeder from Germany and ask to join her family site or to join his family site uh, or ask specifically about those siblings if you want the extra information. So we imp 
privacy is very, very important. We show you information only on matched individuals, only on individuals that exist both in your tree and on the other tree. And for other people that are not matched, um, it's kept private. Okay. Yeah, I, I used I to I used to be concerned about about that, but uh, with everything that I've learned, uh, I think it's a it's actually a beautiful technology that you're doing. Uh, my mother-in-law would not appear as a match to me unless someone else had her, her same exact information. And, exactly, and, uh, exactly. So I'll, I'll also mention that for deceased individuals, there is no privacy. It's uh, in general, there's no privacy on for deceased individuals. Yeah. Okay. Um, so privacy rules apply only for living individuals. Okay. Um, so it's also important to know. Um, but we are always concerned about privacy, and it's always on our top priority. And by but the I'll, way, Shahar, I just we've got a live success story uh, from June. Um, she said she just did the match by relation and found mm -hmm. her mother's cousin, her closest match yet on my heritage. So, June, congratulations. That's exciting. Congratulations. Amazing. Great, great to hear. <laughs> Bob is wondering, uh, what are pending matches so we see pending right here uh, tell us mm -hmm. what pending means and I guess if I click there uh, I would have some other choices here talk to me about exactly. about these so pending matches are matches that you haven't confirmed or rejected yet so when you get a match you can either confirm and save the information or reject and if you have it done either confirmation or rejection it's still pending so it's for you it's for you to manage your list of, of matches. Um, so whenever you see a match and you review it, make sure to confirm and reject it or reject it. Uh, hopefully you confirm it as probably we are accurate with our match. Um, and then it will be removed from the pending list. So you will know that, it, that you already reviewed it. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Hey, I've uh, I've just hit my back button, and uh, I want to go and and I just wanted to explore some of these a little bit more. Uh, here I've got Rupert Martin, and mm -hmm. I want to click on review two matches. What I'd like to do is kind of go through the process of me actually, uh, you know, confirming this, and I want to know what's going to happen mm -hmm. as a result of that. So, and, and because this is a question that a lot of people here are, are asking about. So, in my tree, this is the information that I already know about Rupert. Mm -hmm. the, exactly. On the right side, this is information that uh, probably Daryl Hankins has on his site. And if, if I want to review this further, mm -hmm. I'll click Review Match. So, I'm going to do that here. If you go back before you click oh, Review Match. Okay, I'll, I've just done that then. Yeah, good. So this view allows you to quickly see that your your Rupert L. Martin is the same Rupert Leslie Martin in the other family tree. You can okay. see the birth date, death date, parents and siblings or other relations that you might have. Okay. It's good to review this quickly and see that it's the same person. Good. You might already from here see that it's not exactly it could be the same name but diff but a little bit different date and decide that it's not the same person okay so you can already in this view go over the the matches and decide which matches you want to go and dig into okay uh, great advice i'm glad that you you asked me to go back and here i can see well i did see this before but mm -hmm. i'm a little surprised that i didn't have that about rupert in my tree and so uh this adds information that uh, it looks like I did not have before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, could I should I go do this now? Review yeah, match. You okay. can now review the match. All right, let's do that. Okay, so I've clicked review match. It's pulling up this screen. So on the left side is what I already know. Mm -hmm. The right side. On is the left what side, I... you have your tree information. On the right side is what the match. Inf the information from the match. Okay. So you can see exactly what is new. You can see the tag new info. Okay, if all of these right scroll here. Down, yeah. Exactly. As you scroll down, you can see new info facts. You can see relatives also. 
So in case there's a new rel, in, in your case, you have most relatives, but if you, there are new relatives, you will see them on the right side. Hmm. For example, Dorwood Doc Martin. Hmm. I want to see, is that really true? Did I really not have him? Uh, hold on a second. I'm doing this live. I really want to... I've got well, I've got a Durwood Durwood R down there. I want to see how that compares. It, they may be the they may be the same. They might yeah, they yeah. might be the same. Okay. So now what you need to do is okay, you went over the match. If you scroll all the way down, by the way, you could see a view of tree to tree, so you can easily compare the families and quickly see how many the children you have in your tree and how many children exist in the other tree. Yeah. So that's another convenient view to compare the matches. That is. That was one of our questions an audience member has is how how could I easily do that? And you just got to keep scrolling down a bit and Yeah. Okay. Okay, now you have the orange green but, uh, orange uh, button on the top confirm match. So okay, you decided it's the same person. You can click confirm. But before I do that, I have one more question for you. Sure. Uh, and some of the audience members are wondering, is there a way to view um, the sources that the other person had or has for these people? Is that possible to view that here? Currently, it's not possible to, not to view the sources in this view, but okay. it's definitely something that we're, we're considering to add Ah, in okay. the future, I understand the importance of sources. And by the way, when you when you use smart matches, you should remember that you you are seeing information from other people's tree. So, as gene as in genealogy, as we know, we want to see exactly what is the source and if the information is correct. Yeah. So always question the information that you see. Good. And if if you need, you can contact the site manager. Uh, if you scroll up to the top, you, you have another option to contact. Um, yeah. Okay. Contact Daryl, and you can even request a membership in his site and check the sources in his site. So we do encourage checking the source and not just copying information. Um, and I, but I agree that it could be very helpful to show the sources already also in this page, and it's something that we're thinking of, and we're work, and we're thinking how to uh, integrate it also in this view. Okay. Well, what I like about what how you guys do this is you really you try and figure out how to do it well, and so that's that's what <laughs> you're probably doing right now. You don't want to just throw it in. Um, just like you've done with all the DNA stuff, which is so beautiful. Uh, yeah. I do have many people writing in right now saying, "Is can they view the source in another way on my heritage?" So could I go to, uh, could I go to this person's actual website and view it there? You can go to the there? website if you hover over uh, the Hankings website. You can visit the site. Okay, so I could do, I could possibly do it that way. Now I suppose that would, I would be able to do that if that person has made their tree uh, public, so that I could do that. Is that right? Um, yes, you could. You can either. It's it depends. Some people block, make their their family site completely private, and yeah. you can't access it without requesting membership. Okay. Um, but a lot of the users make it partially private. That means that. There's the information of living individuals privatized, and many of the uh, sections of the family of the family site, like photos, is privatized. But you can see a version of the family tree that includes only uh, deceased individuals and non-private information. So it is an option. Okay. Well, good. That that helps. Now, before I click on the confirm match button, uh, you see, I. I I hesitate to do that without knowing what's going to happen. I do see an arrow just to the right. Will what's the difference between this button and this arrow here? If you click on the arrow, it's safe to click on the arrow. Okay. You can directly save to your tree. A lot of we, a lot of the from our users, we got a lot of feedback that they not necessarily want to save the information, and they just want to confirm. I'm saying this match is valid, and I reviewed it, and it's fine, and I okay. just want to confirm it. And that's what this so, one would do? 
confirm. Yeah, confirm. Uh, we'll simply confirm it. Okay, I like this that. Match. Okay. Um, but uh, for some people, there it. They don't really care about confirming or rejecting. They just want to save it to their tree. Yeah. Now, if you click save on the tree, it will also confirm. But for okay. users, they it's it makes more sense just to save it directly to the tree, and they don't want to go through confirm. Okay. Well, uh, all right. Uh, probably a lot of our users would be more comfortable with the first button that you recommended that mm -hmm. I click on. That, that's why we highlighted the confirm. I like that. Okay. Okay. Am I ready to do that now? We're, we're we're crossing our fingers okay. to see what I'm happens. Okay, I'm going to click <laughs> confirm match here, everyone, and we're going to see what happens. It says the smart match was confirmed. All right, and now, now tell me what's now, now. Walk me through this. Okay, once you confirm, we give you the option to decide if what information you want to extract to your tree. Okay. So. If previously would you would click save and not confirm, you would skip that this stage and it will simply save all the new and improved information to your tree. You didn't have to go through um, reviewing f uh, fact by fact and deciding what you want to take and, or what do you you don't want to take to your tree. Yeah. But now that you confirmed, do we give you the option to decide which facts or information you want to save to your tree? So again, you have on your left side what you ha what you have in your family tree, and on the right side what exists on the other tree. So, for example, you can see the first name in the other tree is, is improved. It has a um, yeah a, a more complete uh, version of it. So you can decide if you want to take it to your tree. So the arrows in the middle actually uh, in in that's the action to take information to your tree. Okay, so when I click on that, is it... Now, it's, nothing still happens. It's only in this page, you only decide what information you want to take. Okay, so by my clicking that, it... So is what it just did, did it... It replaced what I already, what I had in my existing yes, tree. Yes, but only in this view. It still didn't save anything to your tree. Oh, really? Okay. Only like at that. the end, if you scroll down all the way down, if you go over the entire thing, in the end you have save to tree ah, action. Button. That makes me feel a lot better. I I appreciate that. We don't. Yeah, we that. don't want you to. We don't want to make any changes to your tree until you approved, uh, and you decide to save everything to your tree. So in this screen, we give you the option to move information from side to side, decide what you want to take. You can even edit your side of the tree. Yeah, and I saw if you that. go up, yeah, so right here, you, you I... can even manually edit and change and not necessarily take yeah, okay. what's on the other side. Let's say you want to keep also Rupert L and also add Leslie. So you can change that the way you want. Huh. And in the end, you can save all the changes you want to your tree. Okay. All right. I like that a lot. Um, uh, there's another thing I noticed. So right here, if the person had a source citation, it would show up here. And then I could I could add that citation to my site. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, when you save the, the information, my heritage will create a source citation saying this information was taken from this smart match. Ah, okay. From the match of this, from this family side managed by that person and a link to the match. So huh. this source citation is created whenever you copy or save information from record match or smart match. This ma this citation is created automatically. Do you mind if we go and I, I want to see what that looks like? Can we do that? Sure. So I out of everything on this page, I've only checked this one thing right here. Sure. And let's just keep it like that for now. And I'm going to click Save to Tree. Mm -hmm. And now. Okay. Match confirmed. So, there's today's date. And the information is saved. Okay. Now, if you want, you can go to your tree. If there's a link to view in right your here. tree under... Let's do that. 
I like that a and lot. And you can see that the name was updated, okay. Robert Leslie Martin. Okay. That's if you neat. click Robert Leslie Martin and go to profile page, on the right side, scroll down, you would see oh, source this, citation okay. that it was matched to this uh, and it, the information was added by confirming a smart match. Huh. So it so it's clear where you got the information from. So for other people that now, yeah. in case they'll get a match to you, they will know that you got this information from another smart match. Okay. So is that is this different than? I think I could see sources in a, another place. Um, is Under family tree. Let me edit profile. And source citation. Yeah, right here. Source citations. Oh, and it so is yeah, there. It's ah. there. You can edit it, or you wanna if you can add other source citations if you want. Okay. See, I'm trying to I'm trying to stump you here, but uh, you're you're actually you <laughs> you're doing what I would hope it to have done. So nice job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I want to go back to my list. I'm going to go back to smart matches. And by by me doing this, I, I'm I'm saying uh, I'm following a lot of the questions here in my questions panel, and this is helping to answer these questions. Now I, I want to get back to who I was just at, and so I don't want to look at pending. I want to look mm -hmm. at those that I've confirmed, and he should exactly. be here somewhere. Let me sort this by maybe most recent. No. Most recent will give you the most recent matches. Uh, but, okay, uh, so here he is right it, here. Yeah, Rupert Leslie Martin. Okay. Is... Now you can see that it shows review one match. Previously we had two there matches. There were two previously, now, okay. But now you're you're viewing only the confirmed matches. So okay. also you can see an indication that it's confirmed. Now in this view you can also change it. In any view, any page of the discoveries you can change the filters. You can decide now to change it to pending, and you'll get the match that you didn't go over. Yeah. All right. I like that. And we go to review match, see if there's anything else that can come to my mind from this page. I'm not going to click so, on this one. And our viewers here, they uh, had one that said, good job, Jeff, for clicking on this one. <laughs> so that's going to yeah. be my recommendation to all of you is, is do confirm match. And then, so by doing that, I'm getting this clear in my mind here. Uh, when I mm -hmm. click on that, now I get a screen where I can, side by side, I can pick and choose if there's information that I want to bring over. Exactly. Uh, okay. Exactly. All right. We added the save to tree. Um, for people that are less interested in going through each fact or each and just want to add the information to their tree. It's the same concept like the instant discoveries. It might not be the cup of tea of genealogists right. that want to go through each fact and confirm each, uh, each information that goes into their family tree, but for People that are just starting to build their family tree or are interested, you know, showing interest in just building their tree. Yeah. So saving to tree or instant discoveries are good ways to make them engaged and quickly build their tree. Okay, so I agree with that. I think if I'm trying to get uh, trying to get my mom interested in family history. I'm not going to start out by telling mom you cannot do this unless you add all your citations. Now, exactly. genealogists out there will will feel really bad that I just said that, but you see, I want my mom to somehow get interested in family history first, and then uh, then she'll learn the importance of it. I mean, that's how I started. I I remember uh, I had my aunt ask me. She said, "So where where did you get that, Jeff?" And uh, I remember saying to her, "I have no idea." But but I don't know that I would have been interested in family history if I started with the citations first. Um, anyways, there's different ways of getting people uh, involved, and I I may be I may use this one over here if this is a, oh a family that's you know really close to uh, the 21st century. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, certainly when I'm doing uh, real research, no, I'm I'm gonna make sure and confirm uh, everything. 
Okay. Now, we had uh, we had questions about the the book matching that you were talking mm -hmm. about, and uh, and in fact, that's one of the that and the global name translation. Those are you have some technology there that really helped me become interested in in my heritage. Let's go. I want to go over here now to the record matches, and it shows I've got thirteen thousand one hundred and seventy nine of them. <laughs> And uh, and by the way, well, no, I'll talk about that later. So what we're seeing here, this is, we're not looking at other people's trees, but now we're looking at actual records. And this is what our audience really enjoys here. But uh, So we've got 142 sources. That's the number of possible, you know, matches in there. And uh, what am I looking at? These are currently sorted by... It's currently sorted by number of matches. By the way, each matches pages, you can see that at the top you have a filter to see only smart matches, record match, or all matches. So hmm. whenever okay. you want to move from one to another, it's possible also in this view. For okay. example, you can choose to see matches by source as well. Uh, and then it will give you all the family trees that you're matched with. But in case you're looking at record matches, we have the matches from your tree with each of the collections in our uh, from our nine billion records. So you can see you have most of your matches with family search family tree and also with Genie World family tree. And as you scroll down, you'll find other interesting collections. Now, I want to go to the one that's if you have, I'm not sure if you have, but books and publications, and that's the collection for um, the book matching. Yeah, that's the one I want to look for. Is there an easy way to find it here in this list? Oh, is it this right here? Com compilation yeah, of, compilation published sources. of published sources. Okay. So, so this is books and publications. Let's go there. So, and as you can see, it's the same view view that we had before. You have on the left side your the information in your tree, people in your tree, and the the right side you have the historical record. Before we viewed a smart match and showed information from a smart match from another tree, but it's the same when we view an historical record. Well, this one looks really interesting to me. This is what is it searching a a newspaper? So let's go and take a look at that review match. So you can see in the match, it's from a newspaper called Duluth Evening Herald from February 13, 1905. You can see the text that we found the name of Ellen Goshaw. And you see the date of the publication is 1905. And, here's and you the have the, the full... Now, I'm not sure if you can see this in your screen, but there's a purple mark there in the middle of the newspaper. That's highlighting the name. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Okay, it's right yeah. down. Here it is. Yeah, if you scroll in, you see the exact paragraph that we found for Hélène Gouchard. So Hélène Helen, Gouchard of Duluth and his... Oh, wait, it probably starts... Here we go. Yeah, my... Married secretly, everyone. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Martin Brown, learn, <laughs> this is great, learn for the first time Saturday that both their son, <laughs> Colin, and daughter, Fanny, had been married on July 25th last. The marriages have been kept a secret, but as finally announced, appear to be satisfactory to the parents. That's important. And this... Colin Brown was married to Helen Goshaw of Duluth. So it said that the brother and sister were... No way. I don't know if I believe this. It is said that brother and sister were unaware of the other's marriage, although both ceremonies were performed at Carleton the same day. Interesting <laughs> stuff, everybody. We've got so I've got some secrets here, it looks like. Okay, scrolling down. You In scrolling down, you will see the details of this uh, newspaper um, okay. article. And you have the 
OCR text, which is actually what we analyzed to find, it's actually the text inside the newspaper uh, article. So this is what so you're searching. That's what we're scanning and it helps you to find, if it's not always easy to find the name in the actual newspaper, it could be because of the quality of the scan or it could be that the page is you know, already faded. So here is the text that we managed to pull out. Okay. And if you scroll down, you should see also the name here. Yeah, um, so it'll it'll show up in here somewhere. Yeah, it should sh show up with a purple. Uh, oh, it would be. It, oh, really? It would be purple. Okay. It should be. I'm I may sure, have uh, I may have gone too fast, but it's in there somewhere. Um, should be. Where, but it it's it's up here too, and it's highlighted in purple. Yeah, it's, okay. here it's very clear. You can print. You can view it in full screen. Um, okay. I think that's really fascinating. The book matching, which allows you to view, um, to match newspapers and other uh, books that are digitized, and you find all those really interesting facts like secret weddings or oh, stuff yeah. like that. Uh, which you wouldn't find usually in censuses or passenger lists. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, here's Cheryl. Who's uh, Cheryl? I'm gonna. I was gonna answer your question right now. Cheryl says it's easy to see how to add it to my online tree, but is there any way to to download this original source? So, I, so let me show you where. How do I get out of this? Exit full screen. So. If I want to download or save this graphic here, is this mm -hmm. where I would start? Would I go to full screen? Sure. You can click full screen, and you have a download document, which actually will save it as PDF. You can also print it. And here you go. This is the actual PDF All right. file. You can right-click and save it. I think it... Well, that's saving image. I'm wondering... I'm wondering. Uh, see, all of our PDF viewers are a little bit different, and sometimes you got to yeah. move your cursor I think around it's the screen. By default, open for you in the browser. Yeah. Well, let let me say, open image in new tab. It must think it's a. An, I think it's an image right now. So if I right click and go save image as, then I just have to know where on my computer to save this. And all of you know of my digital filing system, but I'm going to just put it on the desktop for right now. We'll call this colon. Brown marriage. You know, let's call it a marriage story. How about that? And <laughs> click on save. And so now that JPEG image is now saved to my desktop. Now, so I I think that answered. Oh, where are you? That answered Cheryl's question. But Joanne is asking just the opposite. How can I confirm that and add it to my online tree? So let's go back so, to exactly here. So walk me through how would I how would I add this to you my can tree? Exit full screen. Okay. First of all, go back to the view. Here, if you confirm the match. Okay, I've clicked that. So exactly like before, you get to a side by side. Scroll down. You can move information. You can the entire source citation. You can add it to the profile in your tree. You see, so. You have all the information to copy. You can edit it if you want, but this is the default. You can see the source of it, compilation of published sources. You can you have a URL to the direct uh, record, okay. and you have the citation that includes the details of the article. Um, if you click Save, it will be saved to the profile in the tree. And now, if you click uh, View... Go to Ellen Gosh on your tree. Yeah, right here. That's uh, what I wanted to do. Tree okay, everyone. So I've 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 confirmed this match, and now where we're gonna go is we're gonna see where it appears in her profile in my online tree. Is that mm -hmm. is that right? Exactly. You can go to profile. Okay. So I'll click here on profile. Mm hmm And there are two places you can see it. First of all, there's a record strip over here okay. where you can see the confirmed record and you can see some other records that we didn't go through for that per for Ellen. 
So that's another way, by the uh, by the way, to view the the records for a specific person. Okay. And if you scroll down to the sources section, you will see the source that you added. Oh, right here. Which includes a link to the record and all the information that you want from that article. Okay. And that would take me right to the right to that mm -hmm. image again. That would take you re right to the record that we were before. Okay. Uh, hey, this is, is this new? Uh, no. No? Okay. <laughs> it looks new, but it's actually been there for a while. New to me. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is not new, but I like this. Shows me how I'm related to this person. Exactly. For each, each person in your tree, you can see exactly how you're related to mm -hmm. him step by step. I like that. All right. So Kathy is saying, can I download it to my offline tree? So Kathy, what I did by by saving that JPEG, remember I put it on my on the desktop. Now I could open up my offline software, uh, like my legacy file or um, with my heritage is the family tree builder, and I mm -hmm. could I could manually add it uh, that way. Um, if you if you use Family Tree Builder, you can sync um, the the information you add to the online tree to the Family Tree Builder, and uh, any source citation or links that you add or match that you confirm, this information will also be downloaded to FTB if you sync. In the future, we do plan to have a sync between legacy. Uh, software and family in my heritage online tree yeah. and then you can sync this information also easily between legacy and my heritage but so i that's uh, in the future so, <laughs> exciting future of yes, us so tomorrow is is part of the future so so i'm hoping that you know, maybe tomorrow uh, or maybe not, but that would be that would be. We'll fun. do our best efforts to make it as soon as possible. But uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, it whenever it comes out. Um, and let me tell you that everyone out there, the reason why I'm I am looking forward to it uh, is because I'll I'll be able to have my. Hey, let me let me do this. Here I here I go. I, I'm pulling up my offline tree, and I'm going to go right to Colin Brown. Unless. Unless it showed up on my other monitor, anyways, won't do that right now. Um, but uh, so I have my information in my offline tree, and I I'm able to sync it to, to this online tree, uh, and I still want it there offline. Uh, there's just I can do more with it, but I want it online too, so I can access it wherever I'm at. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. So uh, I think it's a good thing. Now great. Let let's do a couple of door prizes here, and then we'll uh, I'll come back and uh, and go through other questions that people have sent in. Sure. So door prizes. So we're going. To, well, as I introduced this, this was one of the questions that came up. Um, Matt is wondering uh, how useful are these technologies if you don't yet have a tree in my heritage. It is by having a tree up there uh, that will really. I mean, that's what we need, isn't it, to take advantage of the smart matches and record yes. matches. So we do have our search engine, which we call Super Search in My Heritage, where you can yeah, manually okay. enter in names and search, and the same technologies for uh, book matching and name translations and gl global name translations, they also exist there. But obviously, as you build your tree, we automatically find it for you in the background. So the best way is just build your tree in MyHeritage or import a GetCom or whatever uh, you want to build your tree. And as you work and build it, we will find the matches for you, either smart matches, record matches, or instant discoveries. Okay. Hey, uh, and by the way, Terry writes in with an interesting thought. She uh, She says... She's encountering the problem here, uh, which is not, which is a problem all over the internet. Though, um, she says, uh, well, she calls them with amateur trees, you know, kind of hobbyist trees, maybe that just have so much incorrect information. And so, are the matches really beneficial, Terry? I'll just my 
my personal experience with that is, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. However, uh, I got this one smart match, and now I, I think I wrote about it on our blog, and this is maybe, I don't know, six months ago. But I did get a smart match, and uh, I compared what I had with what they had. They had a marriage date and place that I've been looking for forever. And uh, I don't know how they got it yet, because I don't, I don't even think it had a citation with it. But it gave me a clue so that I could then go to that actual place and, and perhaps find the, you know, find the marriage record offline and actually verify it. Where, whereas before, I hadn't thought to look in that place. So for me, it was a, a good clue. I'm not going to just, uh, like many of you, I'm not going to take someone else's tree and just add everything to mine. Um, but I like them for the clues. The record matches, uh, however, I, are absolutely wonderful. Well, yeah. If I can add yeah, like go a ahead. sentence to what you said, so obviously the smart matches are based on matches between two family trees, and it, indeed, it could be that people entered wrong information, uh, not deliberately. Maybe they don't know. But feel free to contact other site managers and ask them about the information in their tree, or even if you know the correct information, help them get their, get their tree better and more accurate. The smart match is based on collaboration between all of us, and we need to pitch in and try our best to help people to make their trees more accurate, and this will help the entire community. Um, and and if it's beneficial, yes, I think we 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 know about and I personally know about a lot of interesting uh, discoveries made through smart matches. Um, also, it's true that you need to think about any all any information that you take and ask what's the source. Um, just feel free to contact good. as other site managers. Yeah, good. I I think you do a good job with encouraging the collaboration. So, um, uh, yeah, good. Okay, uh, let's do a couple of door prizes here. Um, we're going to start with the, the one-year MyHeritage complete plan. And the complete plan, it includes everything that you need for access to the smart matches and record matches. Is, am I, is that correct? The, the complete plan, Shahar, does that, that gives us everything. Um, is that right? Yeah, complete plan gives you all the access to my heritage matches discoveries uh, through um, records or family trees. Okay, I know if if I remember correctly, you you could get just what's called a premium plus plan, mm -hmm. which is just for the trees, or you could get yeah. a uh, just a data plan, which includes just the records, but the complete is everything. Exactly. Okay, well, uh, let me go out here to our online audience, and I want you out there in webinar land in the 27 countries where you're at here today. Uh, look for that little hand-raising button. It's, uh, it's in the upper left-hand corner of your webinar control panel. Click it once, and that tells me that, yeah, you're interested in, the, in uh, this as a door prize. And if I if I select you, and you already have one, I imagine that we could just add another year year to it. Yeah, that's what Sony is wondering. Is it is it possible, uh, Shahar, to if you currently have a MyHeritage subscription, and can you add to that? Can you have it extended, or is that yeah. something you need to write to support about, or what? You can have it extended or upgraded from premium to complete if okay. you want. All right. So it's possible. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to our list of those who have raised their hands. And our first winner here today is Cindy Cruz. So, Cindy, congrats on clicking at just the right time. And I think I've got one more. Yep, we've got one more of these to give away here today. So keep that hand raised or... Uh, give it one more click if you're still thinking about that. And I will go and find... I've got you, Frank Navage. Frank, congrats. Uh, just watch for an email coming from uh, MyHeritage, actually, on uh, how to uh, fulfill that. 
All right, let me go to my next slide, which I think, yeah, it's my questions slide. So, uh, so Shahar, uh, let's go to this question from Susan. And uh, if at any time you want me to switch over to your screen, that's fine. Or if you want me to just uh, play with my screen while you walk us through stuff, that's good too. Uh, so Susan okay. says, if I totally, so it, it sounds like Susan, um, she, she added, she's got four trees on her site. Uh, okay. And it sounds like they're, she calls them her newbie trees where she's got uh, <laughs> lots of mistakes in those. Um, she's wondering if she removes those, it sounds like she wants to, if she removes those, does that now cause, uh, you know, adverse effects to others who may have confirmed matches with her tree? Yes, when she, when you remove your tree, you remove also the matches to that to that tree. Um, but if you have four different versions of your tree and it's duplicate duplicates, then I think it's better off removing the duplicates and keep one uh, updated tree. And people will get matches also to this tree, and they can confirm it again if they need. But uh, um, I think it's it's better that way, so they won't have uh, duplications. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Now, Chris is wondering about the the brown and green icons, and let me pull that up. Hey, where'd my where'd my oh here's my browser. So let's go into my family tree. I'm curious about this too. So let's say that you have oh. I like the, uh, it's my son's birthday coming up. Thank you for that. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> he graduated from high school uh, last night. Uh, it's oh, kind of in a, uh, double you know, congratulations. Very Mazel emotional to time. Stay here as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here I've got, uh, for me, I've got some record matches. It looks like I've got some, mm -hmm. is this other one, that's a, is that a DNA? Mm -hmm. I haven't noticed that one yeah. before. Okay. If you have, if you tested DNA, so there's an cool. icon for DNA. I didn't, I didn't know that was there. Uh, so <laughs> let's say for record matches that, so I click there and then I go through. So I've got three pending matches and and I go mm -hmm. through and I confirm them or I reject them. Uh, this brown icon, does it stay mm -hmm. there once I've resolved all of the possible matches or? Is there a way to have it removed? So it's currently it's going to stay there, but we are going to improve the system. And once uh, in the future, once you confirm all your record match, the icon will change. So it will still indicate that you have matches, but they're all confirmed. By the way, if you move to pedigree view. Oh, yes, I love that. And this is brand new. So this is brand new. Yeah, good job on this, so, by the way. Thank you. So here, actually, because it's a brand new view, we already implemented um, that if you confirm, you can click oh, really? on your uh, your card, for example, Jeff. So here you can see there are three pending record matches, and the icon is is brown. Okay. Now, if you confirm all those matches, yeah, then this icon will change to. Um, white field so it will say three confirmed record matches oh, okay. so you'll have an indication that you already confirmed them oh, okay i like that so cur currently it's only available in the pedigree view which okay. i by the way encourage all of you to play with and, and work with it's really really helpful and and uh, easy to use and uh, we'll also implement it in the family view is there a way for me to make this pedigree view my default view Yes, definitely. If you click on the gear Probably icon, right here. okay. Oh, <laughs> you have okay. Very, very view is my preferred to view. That was we will easy. add more options in the in the future. <laughs> All right. I was kind of thinking that maybe no. I, I was I was really just kind of giving you a suggestion, but it looks like you've done it. So thank you. Um, By the way, the pedigree view is currently in is only is read only, so you can only view. Okay. But very very soon we'll add. We'll have also edit mode for the pedigree view, so you can view tree and add ancestors and work on your tree from here. Good. So this is really coming soon. 
All right. Thank you. Let's go to Charles's question, who says, how do you enable the instant discoveries? He says, there are none for my tree. Is there anything Charles needs to do to get these discoveries turned on? So in general, they're supposed to be, if he has matches, then discoveries should be calculated automatically. Okay. You can, if you hover over discoveries and you have instant discovery section, um, okay. if he has none, then it's either that he confirmed and applied all of them or um, for some reason we didn't find discoveries for him, so that, but it's, we need to check specifically the case. So if he has any problems or questions specifically on history, you can contact us at support at myheritage.com and we'll check it further. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, you're doing great, by the way, on, on all of these <laughs> questions. And... Sure, I'm, ha I'm having fun. <laughs> I, think I, I think I should have done only q and A. I I think, <laughs> for the entire session. Well, I don't know about everyone out there. It's, it's, it's a fun way to learn sometimes is to actually walk through and stumble across things, make mistakes, and, uh, and yeah. I think we all learn together. Um, I've got a couple of people asking about the 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 timing of the discoveries. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Wolf, for example, says he's he thinks he's limited to just one of those every 24 hours. Is there some limit, or is he using maybe a free version? Or uh, tell us no, about that. No, so for instant discoveries, um, so yes, you can apply one every 24 hours. The reason is that. Each time you apply a discovery, we need to recalculate the discoveries. And that's a process that needs to go over the entire matches. Uh, okay. So we had to um, make a limitation for one each day. I hope that um, in the, I'm saying a lot in the future, but it's really in the future, not, not like theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I hope that we'll be able to uh, raise the limit and, provided more than one in for a day but for now it is one for a day okay but you're talking about just this right here the instant discovery yes, instant we're, discoveries, we're not talking yes. about these other ones right Ma matches uh, record match or smart match you can they're calculated as you go as you build your tree as you add information and you can apply them and save and confirm as many as you want uh, okay and there's no limit okay thank you John has a question uh, he's wondering, is it possible to delete a person from his tree? I, my guess is yes, but how do we do it? De definitely. If you go back to family view. So, first of all, you won't be able to delete someone that is connected to children or parents, like in the middle, because that will cause a disconnection in the tree. Yeah. Uh, connect, disconnecting branches. Okay. So if you want to delete a person, it has to be a person that doesn't have is not in the middle of two branches. Okay. So, for example, not that we will delete them, right? But um, if you click on one of your children, okay. <laughs> click, <laughs> don't worry, you don't have to do it. But if you go to more on the profile, you have delete this person. Okay. So once you click this, it will be deleted. Um, Again, if you try to do it, for example, to your uh, profile, you get an error that we can't delete you because you have parents and children. So Yeah, and look at that. Okay. You are very brave that you trusted me and clicked that <laughs> button. <laughs> yes, I suppose I am. Uh, so what about what about this remove connection? What is that going okay, to do? Okay, so removed and connect, they're usually used to fix... Uh, mistakes that you did in the tree so let's say for example there is um uh, you made a mistake uh, and you want to disconnect from your spouse and children not that i'm encouraging it for in any way um so you remove the connection and you can can connect to another person in the tree so it's not deleting the the, the people it's removing the connection in the tree for example, let's say you want yeah. to change the parents of Nathan uh, William. Okay. So you can disconnect from from your from you and Tanya, 
Yeah. And then connect to different set of parents. Okay. Um, so whenever you click remove, it will ask you if you want to disconnect from parents or from children, if it's uh, the case. So I, I would definitely say to use it in very uh, carefully and cautiously because once you disconnect, it, it's uh, you have to make sure you know where to connect it to because, okay. because you create a uh, disconnection and you create a uh, uh, disconnect in the tree. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I uh, appreciate it. Are you one to ask about uh, about DNA matches? We've got Steve wondering, is there a way to mark a confirmed DNA match? Um, or... So for DNA match, there it works a little bit differently. Um, if you go to DNA matches, um, there's no confirm or reject because... Um, well, because it's they based, are your matches. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's science. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but you can write notes. Um, if you look at next to right Darwin, here. you have notes. Yeah. You can write notes for yourself that's saying that you reviewed it, you confirmed it, you can write whichever notes that you want. Um, so working with DNA matches, it's a little bit different from working with the tree matches or record matches yeah. as uh, um, just different kind of information. And for example, you, there's no match you can extract and save to your tree. It's just reviewing or contacting the other matched person. Um, but definitely there are tools here in DNA matches where you can keep notes and in the future, we also want to add favorite lists so you can mark oh, good. Uh, matches that you want to review later on. Okay. Yeah, Lisa uh, is so just asking about thing. that right now. I, I would let you know what I'd love to see. So all of these first people um, in this area, it says, you know, it's like, it's like it, uh, I've confirmed that this person, I've confirmed how she fits into the tree, but it's doing that because she's in my tree. But I'm wondering, yeah. like, like Bonnie here. So yeah. I have identified, I know how she fits into the tree, and, and here it, you know, it kind of explains that. But you know what I'd love to see someday is me have some way to, you know, to mark her as being my third cousin. And and so it would, the phrase or the text right here would show up, you know, just like this. Or something, so something first of all, Bonnie is a great example. Okay. Um, good. It's very good that you got to hear of the deep connection that we see between DNA matches and family trees. Um, because DNA gives you an estimation of the relationship. It's first cousin twice removed up to second cousin because we we base that on the shared DNA segments, and um, according to that, we assume that's the estimated relationship. But if you have a family tree, and the other side has family tree as well, so we can help you know exactly how you're connected. So in case, for, in your case, Bonnie May Baxter, you also have a smart match with the other tree. The other person that have that did the DNA kit also built a tree, and he, and there is a, a smart match between you two. So if you click view smart match, you will see exactly how you're connected or how we assume you're connected. Um, if you go to review match, scroll down to the tree, you can see where she is in your tree and how she appears in the other tree. Okay. And if it's a match, you can check exactly what's the relationship. Okay. So I oh. think the combination of family trees and DNA information is really, really valuable. And oh, definitely yeah. we're working on improving the connection and the information that DNA can help the family tree and family tree can help the DNA match. Okay. Um, well, good. So it's definitely the direction that we're going and, to invest in. And Gilad, he talked to us recently about the future theory of family relativity. 
Yes, and definitely. That's oh, a we're very, all... very exciting uh, oh, I know. feature <laughs> it is. Um, that we're, we're working on. And um, the idea is that uh, if we go back to the DNA matches, we'll be able to uh, draw a path between, between uh, you and in your DNA match and show you exactly how they're related uh, and which what are the steps that uh, to get to the other person. So that's definitely very, very exciting. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, we've got, uh, we've got time for just a couple more uh, questions. One of them, uh, we've got quite a few asking about this. Is there some kind of a... <clears throat> a printed manual or some way, uh, uh, some kind of a learning system to uh, when so we have we questions? So we don't have a printed uh, menu, but if you go up to the top of your any page of my heritage, you have the help center. Okay. So in the help center, there's many FAQs that in different subjects, you can either search for a question or go by topic or popular questions. And also there's a contact us in the help menu on the top. So any questions that you have, um, you can just send this to us and we'll reply. And we also have phone support in specific countries and ours. So we definitely make efforts to uh, be available for any questions and provide information. So here there are a lot of uh, FAQs about how to use smart matching, family tree, record matching, discoveries. Um, you can find everything here. Good. Okay. Um, good. And our other question here uh, is from Thomas, who's wondering, uh, right now, is importing a GEDCOM file the only way to get my legacy tree onto my heritage? Yes. Um, as until we have the sync, then yes, you have to uh, export your tree from legacy and import it to my heritage. Um, once you import it, yes, under family tree, import getcom. Okay. Once you import it, then all the matching algorithms will run and you'll get smart matches and tree matches and instant discoveries. Um, so it's all going to be available for you. Okay. Uh, so, Thomas, that was just under the family tree. And that's how I got mine up there, Thomas. Uh, so, right here, family tree, import GEDCOM, and then just go through the steps there, and and uh, and off you go. Well, um, yeah. John can't wait for the Jeff and Shahar book in the Q&A <laughs> format. All right. Well, that'd be um, fun. Definitely. Uh, maybe something we'll work on, Jeff. <laughs> Hey, by the way, everyone out there, it's it's almost midnight where Shahar is. What is it? Almost ten thirty there? No, it's uh, ten thirty p- p.m. It's not that late. Well, to me, it, to me, it's kind of the middle of the night. So, thank <laughs> you for uh, for extending your day so you could be with all of us here. I'd really kind of you, and I uh, appreciate this this Q and A format. It's been enjoyable. Uh, yeah. What 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 else do you have to tell us? Do you want to say good night? Uh, uh, Anything well, else? and it's been really a pleasure. Um, I think um, it's uh, from your questions. I think I already noticed a few of the things that I think that we should also Im- improve and uh, make it even more uh, convenient and user friendly for you. Oh, good. Uh, so it was very uh, uh, enlightening for me as well to see the uh, from your questions what the things that are important for you. Yeah. And it's definitely something that we will consider um, in our future plans. And um, happy that I could help. And Jeff, maybe we can organize another Q&A session. It sounds like there are a lot of questions out there. Yeah, Monique writes in saying, let's have a second session of this live exploration of my heritage. This has been the best learning experience, learning about the site. So, yeah, um, yeah. So, For Monique, anyways, good. she enjoyed this this format. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, uh, Shahar, and have a good evening. And uh, thanks to the rest of you, wherever thank and you, whenever you are. Appreciate you sharing part of your day with us. And remember, life is short. Do genealogy first. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye, Shahar. Bye, 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 bye.